Hey guys, Flatpak Effects here and welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. So in this video, we're gonna jump straight in and have a look at how to make this heat wave effect. So I've been using this as a power effect for a short film that I've been working on. And we wanted to go for something that was subtle that wasn't too over the top. So we ended up going with a very slight distortion effect which runs along the edges of the screen. But the great thing about this effect is you can use it wherever you need some heat distortion. And even better, it's done using only the tools available to us inside of After Effects. So let's jump straight in. So I'm gonna create a new composition here and I'm gonna call this one Heat Wave and then hit OK. So then all you need to do is import the file you want to use straight into that composition. So in this example, I've got this kid that's pretending to use the power. Now the first thing we need to do is we're gonna right click and create a new adjustment layer. Then we're gonna come up to effect, down to distort, and then we wanna add this, the turbulent displace. So you can see straight away, it's already created this warping effect on the screen. So we wanna be able to control this a little bit more and we need to change some of the parameters up here in order to do so. Okay, next, I'm gonna zoom in slightly here on the timeline. And I don't want my effect to start until we're roughly about 10 frames in. And I want to create keyframes for the amount, the size, and the evolution. Then I'm just going to select my layer and hit U on the keyboard so I can bring up those keyframes. And then we're going to start making some adjustments here. Now the size, if you imagine little round circles on the screen, is how large the distortion itself is going to be. So for the start, we want to set this to zero. And the amount is obviously self-explanatory. It's how much distortion do we actually want, which we also want to be zero. And the evolution, we're just gonna leave at zero. Now we'll explain these three in more detail, but the next step is I wanna come across to around 20 frames in, and I'm gonna create another keyframe for my amount and change this to about 25. I'm also just gonna right click and create an easy ease in for this one. Then I'm gonna go across to the end of my composition and I wanna create a keyframe for the size and the evolution. Now, if I mess around with this size here, you can see we start to get this distorted effect, which actually looks pretty cool. And the problem is the size is not enough to animate the effect alone. So that's where the evolution slider is gonna come into it. So what I'm gonna do is set this to be 35 for the size. We can always come back and adjust this and I'm going to change the evolution to be around six. Now what the evolution's actually doing is acting like a displacement map, which is it's moving around the screen and animating the effect over a period of time. So by having the evolution, we're creating the movement inside the effect, not just leaving it static. Then I'm gonna come back to line my playhead up with this keyframe in the middle here, and we're also gonna scale this size up to be 25. And I'm also gonna right click and create an easy ease in. Now at the moment, if I play from here, the amount and the size are not changing. It's just the evolution that's changing. So if I play through from here, you can see that we're getting the effect moving in the background. And that's what the evolution is doing to our scene. The reason we've created two keyframes for the amount and the size is because at the start, we want this effect of a wave sort of kicking out, like the power is being switched on. And that's what these two keyframes are doing. It's saying, hey, at this time, we want no effect. And then about 10 frames later, we want the effect to sort of kick out. And that's what's creating this wave effect that sort of looks like it's kicking out of the scene. Now, the other thing we're going to add here is we're gonna come up and change the complexity. Now you'll see, as I change the complexity up, you can see we start to get this really cool effect happening on the edges. Now that's ultimately up to you how much of that effect you want to apply, but I find anything between two and four is a really good starting point. So I'm just gonna leave mine at two. And the other thing we're going to do is I'm gonna come over to all my effects and presets and just search for vector blur and drag this onto my adjustment layer as well. And if I drag this amount up to around 10, that just helps soften the edges of this effect. Now it's also revealed part of the edge of the screen here and a quick way to fix that is if I come over here and just search for motion tile, I can just drag a motion tile on top. I can then expand the edges, hit mirror edges and then that'll just hide the edges of my screen there. Now the other thing is I wanna come across to make sure my playhead's lined up with the one second mark and just create an animation for that vector blur. 
So I'm going to create one there and then back where we don't want any effect and change this to be zero. So if we play through that, we've now got this distortion effect happening over our entire shot. So at this point, you, you could just go through and adjust any of these parameters in order to get different effects. So the last thing I wanna do here is maybe your shot, you wanna use the heat effect over the entire shot. But in this case, I don't want the heat effect to be applied to the center of my frame. To get around this, all I need to do is just select my adjustment layer, bring up my pen tool by hitting G on the keyboard. And I just wanna draw a bit of a mask that just goes around my actor's face here. And then I'm gonna invert and give this a bit of a feather. So there you go, that's how easy this effect is to create inside of After Effects. Now if you like this video and you want more great After Effects content, click the free sign up link below to get your free access to my members only section. You will not only get my free 8 Pro Tips guide, but I'll keep you up to date with all the latest tutorials, discounts and content. Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.